Yeah, so there's what I call an ideal identity. Now, this is going to be the concept of what it is, and there's ways that you actually adjust all these things. So if you mm -hmm. think about it, your ideal identity is the one that is ideal for your dream, not mine, yeah. not Susan's or Tim's, but yours, right? So everybody has their own aspirations, dreams. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is when we think about wanting this thing, we have this immediate comparison to the fact that we are not that person. So we get this imposter mm -hmm. feel of like, yeah. I don't want to lean in because if I lean in, they're going to they're gonna yeah. out me. They're going to go, it's not who I am, right? Yeah. And then they think, well, how do I, how do I get to the point of having a true confidence in this area? And what it really is, is first you have to architect what that identity mm -hmm. is for you got to craft it because it was unintentionally yeah. done before. So now you got to intentionally sure. do it. And that this yeah. at times honestly means accepting that you, you saw love the wrong way or sex meant something mm -hmm. different or you were seeing money differently. And yeah. that's really, that's, like, that, that's the process I can talk about in a second. But the concept of your ideal identity is comprised of six main factors. And it's going to be essentially your belief system. What do you believe mm -hmm. is possible? Yep. True to your root, believe is possible for yourself, for the world that's out there. The thoughts that you have. Because we can believe something, but we can have thoughts that are completely opposite, right? Which mm -hmm. is, I believe oh, for sure. talk about this. But Anthony, can you? Are you able to? What if they, what if they say <laughs> something negative, yeah. right? The and voice in the head. Get. Yeah, the voice in the head. I call it mm -hmm. the pessimistic co-pilot. <laughs> <And then you laughs> I, like I like your turn better. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Then you yeah, have the big good. actions you take, right? What are the big, bold, scary actions that you take that set you apart to where you can stand up on a mountain and say, I slayed that monster. I'm the monster slayer now, right? Yeah. Now, what's interesting is these each are like a Venn diagram. They overlap. And between mm -hmm. beliefs and thoughts, you have your mindset. We all mm -hmm. talk about mindset all the time. And unfortunately, too many people leaned on that without realizing that there's studies that'll show that if you don't have a, a self categorization in an area, the mindset mm -hmm. will never work for you. There. If I don't believe yeah. I'm an entrepreneur, you can apply all the entrepreneur aspirations, affirmations you want, but you'll mm -hmm. still not believe it's who you are. So you'll still yeah. not succeed. When you yeah. have actions and thoughts, there's the, what do I think I need to do every day? Work out, write emails, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Yeah. And do I do it. And in between is your habits. And we all know about habits. Yeah. I don't go deep on that. If you have good habits, things can happen amazingly, right? Outside mm -hmm. of the big Yeah, action. sure. Yeah. Then you got a big key one. And this is between beliefs and actions. Now, this is the one that so many people lose sight of. But this is the one that matters because here's the thing. As human beings, we will fight for what we believe we deserve. Our identity will not let us fall below a line. If I'm a great dad, how dare you try to challenge me on being a great dad? I, that's who I am. I believe it's who I am. Yeah. And look what I've done for my kids. I, I quit my job. I show up to baseball. I show up to football. I coach. How, don't, don't you dare take that from me, right? I'm, yeah. the, the, you know, I'm the CEO. I've done my work. There's a belief in an action. I did the work to do it. Mm -hmm. but the problem is too many people don't believe they deserve very much. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Fight yeah. for a little bit. And yeah. so the question is, well, how do I get and there? Settle. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And not only that, but like they, they settle and they know they're settling. Mm -hmm. Sucky place, right? And then, so, they, and then they go into comfort zone with it. They do. And then yeah. they, don't, they don't push for more. And so it's like, okay, well, yeah. how do you have these things lap? Well, reliefs and actions overlap. Think about any time that you've done something that you, you got done and you puffed your chest, get the chills, the goose pimples, like, ooh, I did that, right? <laughs> yeah, right. The main belief in action is your personal pride or your positive ego. Now, the mm -hmm. ego, everybody assumes is this negative thing, but the ego protects the identity without mm -hmm. even having a second thought. It's the, the re retort that you say. It's how are you mm -hmm. disciplined? How do you respond, right? Are you resilient? Because yeah. the ego shows up in the actions that you have. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what happens is people believe they're supposed to do something and they don't take the action. You lose that. You get a small little identity yeah. and you have a small, it's protecting something small. And so what mm -hmm. happens is, you don't fight for what you believe you deserve because you don't believe you deserve very much. You didn't earn it. Yeah. But yeah. when you believe you should do the thing and you do it, holy crap, does that <laughs> pump it up? <laughs> yeah, it changes the game. Challenge, yeah, it changes the game. So when someone comes yeah. to challenge you and take that, oh, no, no, that's mine. <laughs> like, you ain't, dude, when I was 15 years old and I played football, I sucked for two years. But from 15 to 16, dude, I, I went to the weight room every day. I lifted weights. Mm -hmm. I ran routes. I threw the ball yeah. in the air. When I came the next year, dude, I am catching this ball because I deserve it. You do not deserve to take it from me. I'm making this tackle because you don't deserve to get away from me. Yeah. You aren't allowed to tackle me. You don't deserve that right. There's a different yeah. sense of how I showed up in my life in the football field. It's the same when I'm here. Like, I deserve that speech. I deserve yeah, that yeah. client. Because I know that I've done the work in the background to show up and serve amazingly. That's me. And I'll pop up and talk what? about it, right? Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, one of the things that I think is, um, is important for pretty much anybody who's on this journey, right? We're, we're all on the journey. 
All of us. Um, you know, you talked about the ego being small, so you play small, right? You, you talk about the ego growing, so you, you can play at a different level. Yeah. Right? So you take these different things and you look at um, ego is directly tied to emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. How you respond, how you're out, what the things that you say to yourself, yeah. right? You take all those things and you begin to put those together. And essentially that it creates the, the belief pattern, right? Well, it's, not, it's more than a belief pattern. It, it, it determines who you are. Because yeah. the belief pattern is part of it. Um, if you imagine all these things, a Venn diagram, beliefs, thoughts, actions, overlaps, mm -hmm. mindset, habits, and then ego. If you were to put a propeller on those and tilt the whole thing sideways and make it a drone, if they're all on, they all go to the top. You can fly as elevate as high as you want. But yeah. if one propeller is out, that thing tilts and flies into a wall. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> so, I lost a drone one time that way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what happens. So when you asked earlier, like, what is the identity? It's an active, living, breathing part of who you are. And when you okay. consciously think through these little aspects, it allows you to see that, oh, the reason I'm not succeeding is because, well, my mindset's weak. I believe in myself, mm -hmm. but I keep, I keep second guessing my thoughts. Or, you know what? I'm thinking this and I'm affirming this, but I don't believe this. Or, yeah. you know what? I haven't taken those bold actions anymore. Or my habits yeah. suck. I mean, any one of those throw you off and you're trying to get to the top. And it's like, no, when you really want to succeed, that you need to learn how to operate at a higher level. And that's mm -hmm. understanding how all of these flow without you thinking about it. Here's some science for you. There's a part of our brain called the DMN, default yeah. mode network. And yeah. this is a part of your brain that whenever you are thinking about it, like, you know, who am I? Shuts off. Like they studied yeah. mice. Like when someone says, hey, who are you? Mice they didn't ask, but people, who are you? <laughs> Shuts off. And we go to a conscious yeah. part of like, oh, I'm a speaker, I'm a coach, I'm a father, I'm a mom, I'm a, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is. But then whenever someone lets you just be by yourself and you're just going through, like you're staring at birds and you see some, a, a car crash or somebody, that lights mm -hmm. up. Because mm -hmm. now who you are is running. You're in flow. Mm -hmm. You're operating. Yeah. That operational part, it houses your beliefs, your thoughts, mm -hmm. your habits, yeah. your mindset, your pride. It's all in there. Yeah. So when that's operating smooth, you're just in flow and you're performing very well. Yeah. Which determines your outcomes, your success you have or lack thereof. And so when you asked earlier, like, what is your identity? Like, that, that ideal identity, you have to actually craft at this point in your life. I had to do it. Yeah. We all got to do yeah. it. I did the same thing. Some people, yeah, some people happen across it. Some people will just work real hard and figure it out. It just, let's be honest, it's not the only way. I was smacked with a four by four. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to hit it, right? Life just hit me and said, hey, you're going to respond to this, whether you like it or not, Jerry. So yeah, we're forced to. And, and so yeah. for me, like my work has been how do I make short net for my 30 plus years to three months for people? And the shift mm -hmm. method I created, it actually does that. But it's, it, that's the, it comes from an understanding. So I'm having people go back and for the first time, they're consciously thinking about who they are, stripping that ego back. Cause a lot of the, the ego also protects whatever the identity is in there. And if it's mm -hmm. an identity that kind of sucks, Oh, it'll, it'll attack it. It'll just pretty much protect it. It'll say, no, the reason this is happening is because of this, like I was doing. No, it's cause yeah. I got a bit, my wife was horrible and the, the market. Yeah. Sucked, so my business is doing well, poorly. All these things will still be protected by that, that ego. It's just, it, that's its role. Yeah. right? So when you start yeah, saying, sure. Hey, ego, Stop protecting that trash and start putting something yeah. better in it. it. Protects that also. Well, let me talk about this. So you have the situation where, yeah, all right. So you let's say let's assume you, you're doing the work, right? You're doing the work. You're you're working on yourself. You're yeah. you're doing the quasi personal development with quotes, and I use that word loosely because personal development is a very loose word for a lot of moving parts, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you look at all that. Let's talk about the overall influence. So we know influences are actually really strong at the early onset of life. Right. We know that it intensifies a little bit as you start going into adolescence. And we know it almost doubles down when you start going into your professional career because you oh, begin the comparison good. piece. Right. Mm -hmm. So we know all these places are, are there. One of my favorite YouTube pieces that you just recently did was actually on creating healthy boundaries. Yeah. And one of the things that I believe in that obviously, you know, you've heard, you know, show me your five friends. I'll show you your future. You're the sum of the five people we spend the most time with. And it's a life truth. It's a life truth. I'll, I'll, no matter how you say it. But what people don't talk about is how to select them yep. and then how to put a fence around making sure the wrong ones don't get in your yard. Yeah. So tell me about how you began to work with, with the boundary system. Cause I think you have a unique perspective on creating those boundaries and, and, and whatnot. And I yeah. think it's, I think it's worthy of sharing. 
Yeah, I've, I've had so I've had a lot of people inside the, the yard. So you you speak. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they ain't supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah, it's just you deal with a lot of stuff. I think in the world when you're out in the world, like I was out in the world, just it happens. People want to be around you because you're the college star, and you're the football star, and you're playing in the NFL, and then. You know, you, mm-hmm. then you get, I got divorced and before yeah. we got back together, I had this, this big window of like, all right, I'm the, the local guy yeah. who has, owns gym, former NFL athlete, like has a little bit of money. And, and so like, you have all these people that come in and then you just, you let them in. Yeah. And it's problematic because now you got all these people in the house and like, I don't even know half the people at the party, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and then I, when I started having this moment of like, I got to wake up to this, I started realizing like, okay. I, and I run my life kind of like a business. I'm the, I'm the, the, the company and I have this product yeah. that needs to go to the next level. And it's like, all right, if I'm going to bring this business to the next level, what employees do I need? Now it sounds yeah. odd, but it's like at the same capacity, yeah. my, my personal, my intimate partner in my relationship, that's an employee. They hold a role, right? My kids mm-hmm. hold a role. My friends hold a role. My, you know, my clients yeah. hold a role. And I got to realize that every person is in this, this company with a specific purpose. And if I don't make sure I'm holding them to do their job, the company falters. Hey there, if you really enjoyed that snippet, you're really going to love the full interview right here. So make sure you check it out. When most people have a bad, uh, a bad ability to actually to hold the willpower of the choice in the moment. So what happens is someone comes in, people are the ones that test our boundaries. Someone says, hey, do you want to go to the bar and get a beer? No, I don't want to get a beer. That's my first thought, right? They say, hey, mm-hmm. come on.